Hello. Oh, there I am. There I am. There I am. Hello, everybody. I am sorry I'm a couple of minutes late. I was just having the most kick ass session with one of my one to one clients. And it was, you know, when you go into that vortex when you're with a soul client and you're just like, oh my gosh, this is so amazing. And then I was like, whoops, I'm a couple of minutes late. So I trust that you are joining. I'm trusting that you are watching. I'm trusting that you will get whatever you require. And I'm also trusting that if you're watching on replay, that you will say hashtag replay and let me know that you're here. So hello and welcome to day two. I'm pretty sure I've got the time right, although a couple of minutes late. So yesterday, yesterday we covered reprogramming the mind. Now money is energy, right? We know that because everything's energy. And if money is energy, then why do we not have enough? Why do we not have these 10K businesses or 50K businesses? Why are we always focusing on the lack of money? And what we came about and we figured out in this amazing workbook that I've created is that a lot of it has been programmed, actually about 99% of the thoughts, feelings, beliefs, judgments that we have, have actually come about from other people's points of views and judgments and societies and also the DNA, like the tribal stuff. Hi, Nicole. Thank you for joining. Thank you for saying that you're here. How are you? You had an amazing live. And hello Jess, how are you? How's Baba? So if you're joining, please come and say hello. Um, and yeah, so basically down this intergenerational line as well, we have got these points of view and a lot of you commented and said, you know what, um, we were poor. We didn't have anything. We got told to shut the door. We weren't heating outside. I love that one. I never heard that one before. Um, another chick actually said that she lived in a big house. And that people used to say, are you rich? And I know that that girl used to have horses as well. And what points of view do we have about people that have got horses or big houses or, or money? You know, so it's not just about whether you um, had lack of money. It's also about if you didn't have money. Because if you didn't have money, um, I mean, if you did have money, sorry, <laughs> um, then what judgments were you getting? So where are you crushing yourself down to not receive the money because you wanted to fit in? Have you ever seen like a tall person like kind of hunched down because they didn't want to show up too much? Have you ever seen a person try to fluctuate their weight to fit in with their friends or their sisters or whatever? It's all the same thing. It's all energy. It's all points of view. It's all judgments and considerations. So that's what we covered yesterday. So if you haven't watched that, then please go back and watch it. You may learn some stuff. Um, hello, Andrea. How are you? Welcome. So thank you for you guys commenting. Thank you for all of those that did those little videos and those little intros. There's so many coaches and practitioners here. I'm like exploding with excitement because you guys are the people that I coach. <laughs> um, I coach high level coaches. I am a spiritual empowerment coach for aspiring entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs. And I am also a medium, a life coach, a channel and all the things. So, you know, I want to hear about you guys and what is happening in your business and all that type of stuff. If you are not clear on your messaging, if you are not clear on what it is that you are trying to do or show up with what your genius is then this is going to help you we're going into day two which is superpower superpower versus shadow self now what i love about this and coaches will always talk about this because your story is powerful now i see people do two different things okay they either go on and on and on about their story because they're still trying to pull energy um, to fill up their victim mode, to help them be seen. Again, this can actually happen as we're growing up. Like, what did you have to do to get attention? I probably should have put that in this book. So you can just write that down if you like. What did you have to do to get attention as a child? I remember a girl that I went to school with and she put dots all over her face and said, mommy, take me to the doctor. That certainly got attention. But does the good little girl who's sitting there reading a book get attention? So what did we have to do to get attention and where is that playing out in our adult life, in our relationships and in our businesses? Do we have to do things to get attention? Are we creating drama? 
to get attention. Just a little bit of an interesting thing for you to think about there. That's the one thing that some people do. I've even seen coaches do that. So um, they're not really doing it for the coaching. They're doing it for the attention. And maybe they don't realize they're doing that. The other thing that we use stories for is understanding. So people can resonate with you. So my story on my podcast, um, my very first podcast um, thing, <laughs> it's not an interview because it's me, my very first podcast goes into the depths of my depression and how I wanted to die and I didn't know, you know, how could I not be happy, I've got children, so it was guilt and shame and all these different things. The reason why I expressed everything in that podcast on Release Your Blocks is so people could understand, oh, okay, so she was feeling this way. And now she's like happy every day. How many people can say that they're happy every day? Especially if they spent the first 30 years of their life not being happy or thinking happy was something else. So the reason why I use my story is so people can resonate with me. People could say she had postnatal depression. Like it's not so I have the labels. It's so people can say, I understand that because I went through the same thing. I struggled with my children. I wasn't natural at feeding or I was this or I was that or I was in a, in a narcissistic relationship. Whatever it is, um, it's about making the no like and trust so in people's faces that they go, I know you because I resonate with you. I like you because you're similar to me or, or whatever. And I trust you because you are being vulnerable. When we are hiding ourselves, when we are hiding all of our truth, Maybe you were a drug addict or an alcoholic. Maybe you you slutted around. Like, you know, what, what judgment do people have about that? Maybe you were broke. Maybe you just weren't that nice person. These aren't who you are. These are things that you did. And these can be your stories. I'm just like pulling these out, of course. But these are some of the things that people around money, around drugs and substances, or around sex, these are the things that have been very much judged in society. So if you have experienced them on some level, it doesn't even have to be extreme, you may have an attachment to toxic shame or toxic guilt. Now, if we are functioning from this and from a scarcity, then what actually happens is we're hiding and we're not completely showing up. We're just trying to be someone else. We're trying to be something else. And that may not be serving us. So what I'm going to say is don't go and be all those versions of who you were that you didn't particularly like, but what if you could embrace your past and look at it and look at your stories that you've been through and say, wow, what could other people learn from these stories? When people feel like they're alone, it's because they're not resonating with somebody else. They feel like that no one can hear them or see them or understand them. And, you know, put your hands up if, if that was you. That was me. I was like saying to my husband, ah, I'm dying and no one can help me. And everyone, no one knew how to help me. I wasn't willing to receive the help. And that's why I do coaching now. And I teach people how to receive this help, how to release their crap, how to perceive their gifts. And this is everything that I create, created my Relational Blocks um, signature program about was doing these three things and doing it in so many different ways and doing the mindset and the energy stuff and the structure and the strategy so you can propel forward. So I'm just going to have a look. Hello, Cara. How are you? She's like, true that. <laughs> I love that. It's awesome. So jump if you're jumping on, say hello, please, um, because I want to see who's on here, my beautiful friends. And I loved how much variance we have, uh, variety we have. We've got people from America, all around Australia, all around New Zealand. It is amazing. And you can still share this. You can go and share the links to everybody if you think this would help them in their life and in their business because it's all one thing. However you're showing up in your life is how you're showing up in your business. Now, we feel like we're in a hustle sometimes. We're, we're like we're juggling right so we might be a mom and there might be a business and there might be a job and for goodness sakes we throw in a side hustle now you know we've got these side hustles which is the practitioner or the coach while we've got a job while we've got four kids or whatever it is you can see why people hit burnout because they are literally filling up every hour of every day and they don't feel like they have any space so I totally get that 
So just going on this riff, I'm going to give you a little bit of advice on that. If that is you, just let me know if you feel like you've gone to overwhelm. So give me some hearts or give me a comment or let me know so I know where you're at. And, you know, if you are going into overwhelm, what can you drop? Now, I've had to drop, I'm going to be really honest with you, in the last two days because I've got, I've got a lot of amazing stuff going on. Like I love looking at my book going, oh my God, I've got this amazing soul client. Oh yeah, I get to do my challenge. I've got a one-to-one -one tonight, all these different things. I love it. But I also was very aware with my cycle. I was also very aware with the things that are going on next week that I require to be aligned. And if I push too hard right now, I may get out of alignment, which will cause me to go into overwhelm, right? A lot of the time we don't pick up on those signs and we go into overwhelm because we're too busy being busy. So what can you drop when the overwhelm starts kicking in? When the frustration or the bitterness or the anger or all of those feelings of I'm so tired and overwhelmed, what can you drop? So I've personally dropped my personal training sessions. Now that sounds crazy, but I know I can go for a walk later or I can do something. I've had to drop the last two days. I feel quite stink because I love my personal trainer. She's amazing. She's an amazing coach. But she also said, that's cool. You've got to do you. You've got to do you. So that was the one thing that I dropped because I felt like I want to nurture my body. I want to show up for you. I want to show up for my clients. So what was I willing to drop? And that's what it was. Everyone has something they can drop. It could be like, you might watch Shaw on the street every night and maybe it's your unconscious thing that you just sit there just watching and maybe that's taking up too much of your time. Maybe you're talking on the phone and it's taking up all your time. There's these little things, these little energy leaks, which we're actually going to go on to on what day we're going to do that. Maybe tomorrow we're going to go into energy leaks. Um, and once you plug those energy leaks in, you have time and space. So time is just an illusion. So we're going to go into that another time. Not today because today... We're going into <laughs> superpower and shadow self. So I want to know, what is your story? And do you have any shame or toxic guilt around that story? Now, I was talking to my coach this morning, and she said to me, or last night or whatever, and she goes, you know, make sure that you're not hiding anywhere. And I was like, am I hiding? Because I always go into it with a question, am I hiding? Where am I hiding? Am I showing myself to everybody as me? I'm not saying you've got to push live and be like, hi, and you know, we're not the center of the universe. We're the, only the center of our own universe <laughs> and our own reality. Everybody else is the center of theirs. So I'm not saying that you have to be everywhere all the time, but are you being authentic to yourself or are you still squishing in trying to fit into others' realities? If you're an empath, then what you'll do is you're trying to put yourself in the same frequency as others so you can feel them, know them, you can resonate with them because you don't want to feel lonely, but also because you want to feel like you know what they're going through. Is this serving them? That will serve them for a short amount of time. But the truth is, if you are a guide, if you are a leader, if you are an authority, which I'm guessing if you're on here, you are in some way, shape or form because you're on this five day challenge to monetize your genius, then is that really helping them? By you choosing for you and showing up and owning all of you, which is your shadow side as well as your superpower, which actually are yin and yang and they go together like this. If you can do that, you can be the energetic invitation for others to choose. When we change and we shift, I know some of you guys on here right now were on my pregnant psychology, um, and it, you know, I go into this real deep in a lot of my trainings. But when you are choosing you, and I said this yesterday too, some people may not like it and they may come to you with a bit of resistance. This is energetic, they come to you and you're showing up doing your thing, and they come up and go, What are you doing? and you, you put your ba barriers up and go, What? and then boom, 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 you get this kind of like conflict, right rather than having so much fun that you don't notice and or you notice that they have some energy towards you because you're intuitive right but you think that's theirs i'm doing me but hey you can come along if you like it's like when you go for a run in the morning and you message your friend and say would you like to come because they keep saying i really want to get fit so you keep inviting them come on you can come you can come 
you can either invite them and then eventually they come along or what you can do is you can say oh yeah I don't want to change too much because you know they're not changing so you just stop going for those runs you wouldn't do that would you you would choose for you so this is on a bigger scale this is on a life scale when you're choosing you you're not going to lose you you're just going to find you and this is what a lot of people are finding is they like to ignore themselves their shadow side and they go oh I'm just gonna pretend I didn't do all of those things and I'm gonna go down this way and not even look at those other parts of me because oh I don't know I don't want to be a bad person um, and what they do by doing that is they're cutting some of themselves off if you had a bad arm and it's like cutting your arm off and just not using it you know but what what contribution could that arm be so I know I'm using some random analogies here but when we look at our shadow self and when we look at our superpower and we ask some questions what consciousness can I be and add here what energy can I be and if you're the strongest entity in your reality you're the strongest being like you're choosing for you not for the external but for you then what actually happens is nothing can hurt you right so you're obviously going to be attracting in people that desire to be like you they love your energy everyone wants to hang out with an amazing cool person and if there's conflict there it's because they're not following their dreams so why would we stop following ours so someone who is listening to this needs to hear this let me know if it's you put it in the comments let me know if this is making sense to you so in the book here if I go my roof for another hour are you holding Oh, are you hiding who you are so I'm gonna ask you now and I just want you to have a bit of a feeling within your body what's light and expansive is a yes what is heavy and contracted and like a gut feeling is a no truth are you hiding who you are did you get a yes did you get a no and if you've got a no I'm gonna say truth are you completely showing up yes or no it's usually those parts of us that we are hiding those parts of us we don't want to look at they have got the superpower in them they have got the strength no I don't really particularly want to talk about you know I was depressed and I was this and I was that and I had the house and the husband and the fence and the yeah the, the business I had the friends I had the lifestyle but I wasn't happy when I say that it makes me sound like a selfish bitch you know well it doesn't doesn't really but that's what some people thought and that's what I felt from them so I made myself wrong so I've got an itchy nose now it must be something I'm releasing <laughs> or someone else is releasing because of course we can feel other people's feelings as well and we make them our own so the reason why I repeat my story is so people say oh she did that so she found happy when she was depressed so maybe I will be able to find my happy too she chose differently so when we are growing we look at somebody who's done the things and we go oh I, I like that I'm gonna follow that I'm gonna choose that and that's why your story is so important so you can be the authority and show other people there is a way you can be the light you can be the energetic invitation which means embracing all of you are you willing to be every energy and take total responsibility for who you be taking responsibility for who you be is being the observer of your life if you expand out and you go I'm just getting a little bit of a review of my life the who I am the what I do and how I do it so these are the three things um, that Kane Ramsey so I did life coaching with Kane Ramsey he's amazing and I've got this really cool PDF so if you want it let me know I can flick it through to you and it's basically three circles who you are how you do it and what you do people get mixed up people go okay who are you, you go I'm a mum that's not who you are that's what you do who are you um, I'm a hard worker well that's not who you are that's how you do it so who you are is that core essence you have the ability to be anything and what I was teaching about on the weekend again if you guys are on here let me know um, 
was, are you willing to be the demon bitch from hell? Are you willing to be the murderer? Are you willing like to be all of these energies? You don't have to go out and do these things, but if you're cutting off energies, and you're cutting off, if you're like, I'm just a good person, I'm just a nice person, I'm just a nice person, one day you're going to explode out and like go, ah, I've had enough, because you can only hold that pretense for so long. You can be any energy, but you have total choice of what you are actually being, right? So who you are, are you compassionate? Are you a person with a massive big heart and you, you're empathic? Those are things that who you are. It doesn't mean that you didn't do the what's or the how's. It doesn't mean that you didn't do the bad things. It doesn't mean, it mean any of that type of stuff. But those are your stories. So you could learn and you could grow and you could share. So people could create, you could create the know, like and trust. So you could be the authority with your message, which comes through to help so many other people. So when it comes to monetizing your genius, and if you just turn you up and show up unapologetically, then what actually happens is people go, hey, can I have a coffee with you? Hey, um, do you, how do I work with you? Like, I get messages every day, how do I work with you? And I go, let's jump on a call and have a chat about it because I do a, a various, a few things, right? So that's the same with you. Where are you the guide amongst your family? Where are you the guide amongst your friends? Where are you the guide amongst your business? What are you choosing to create? How much reach are you choosing to, to be and to have? And this is how you monetize your genius, by allowing yourself to show up and embracing the shadow. So if you take full responsibility for your past and your now and your future, and you have these beautiful roots coming from your feet down to the ground, and you know who you are, and you know how you do it and what you do, then you're basically unstoppable because you know that it's not just the behaviors that have happened in the past which have taught you your lessons it, it is more that that core essence of who you are because we have many influences in our life we have got society we like i said 99 percent of the thoughts feeling beliefs judgments have come from other people so of course we would have done actions in the past that we are not so proud of but we certainly learnt from so embracing that shadow and accepting yourself and taking that responsibility rather than cutting it off. Um, this is where we can go into inner child stuff. This is where we would go into um, um, doing, you know, you could do some EFT tapping, um, looking at your beliefs, looking at the things that are stopping you. So your blocks. So the Release Your Blocks program is about actually going in and just moving <laughs> the blocks so you can just keep propelling forward and seeing things as a gift rather than seeing them as a curse. Okay, so let's see if there's any, oh look, good morning, Lucy. Best thing I heard yesterday, your vagina does not have an odometer. <laughs> That's awesome, I love it. Oh my gosh, good morning, Amy. Oh, Kara said she's good, thank you. Good morning, Emma. Social media, oh plenty, but trying to shift it, me, yes. Very interesting, yes, yes, both days, I loved every minute. Yes, Emma came to both days, she is now a BARS practitioner, and we did a pre med psychology. And anyone who does these types of trainings with me sit there going, whoa, this is like hard out, because it's not just the words, it's actually vibrationally shifting, shifting energy, um, so many things, right? And this is what we're doing right now as well. So, how much complaining are you doing on the daily? I just want you to take note for a moment. How much complaining, this is all on the day two of the Superpower and Shadow Self. How much complaining are you doing? Now, I used to complain all the time and my husband would be like, stop complaining. And I'd be like, what? Like, isn't it my privilege, my prerogative to complain? I used to complain about someone or something or I always found something to complain about. Why did I do this? Because I was taught it. I was taught it. You just have to turn on a TV program and you pick up that, you know, or hear someone complaining about someone else and resonate with them and start like buying into their reality. So how much complaining are you doing? Where is this coming from? Do you receive from the people around you? 
The funny thing about receiving, guys, and I go into this deeper um, in my program, but with receiving, if you desire to have those 10K months, if you desire to have those 50K months or those 150K months or a million dollar year or even a hundred thousand dollar year, you know, whatever you are desiring can come to you, but you have to be willing to receive everything. Like I said, be every energy and then you have total choice because you are you. So taking that control, taking that responsibility back. But when it comes to receiving, when you show up like this, then I'm putting myself in a situation where some people might go, oh my God, she's this, she's that. They may bitch and moan about me. They may put me down and say, oh my gosh, she's so annoying. I might trigger people. And like I said yesterday, that's cool. I don't mind because I'm willing to receive. I'm willing to receive money. I'm willing to receive joy. I'm willing to receive people's um, celebrations. I'm willing... All of my clients that are on here now know that when they have a celebration, like, yay, can we just celebrate that, please? Because well done, you had a breakthrough, right? So I'm willing to receive the negative as well as the positive because you can't just filter out and say, I'm only willing to receive good things. But you can be so strong in your knowing and within yourself that when crap comes in, you just go, oh, that's nice, and flick it on by. Like, why can't you be that energy? Who told you you couldn't be that energy? Who told you to run away from the dark? Who told you to be afraid or to be scared? Because this here is just points of view that you've taken on. We should never function from fear. We should always function from strength and love within ourselves first and foremost. So where do you pick up these kind of unconsciousness, this unconscious point of view where we become, you know, complaining people, where we go, oh, I'm not doing that, I'm not doing that, and we make things significant rather than saying, I'm willing to receive everything, and then when it comes to you, go, thank you, I take that and that and that and that. If someone said to you, go into that supermarket, you've got, you know, like half, oh, say three minutes, not half an hour, <laughs> you've got three minutes to fill up the trolley with everything that you want, you know, and they said to you, this is an opportunity, go for gold, would you go, oh, but I only don't like some of the things in that supermarket, you know, you'd be like, hell yes, you'd take that supermarket and you'd do the flying swings around the corridors and you'd be like, yeah, that one, that one, that one, oh, I've got to start thinking because I can only fit so much in, so then you'd actually start going, okay, I'm going to grab this, this, and this, and this, and this. Or you would just throw it all in because you knew that you had the capacity to really like be clever with that um, that trolley and receive all of those things. Then you get home and go, I don't really like that. Oh, that's okay. You can just throw it out. So what I'm trying to say here, another strange little bit of analogy there or metaphor, is that if you're willing to receive everything, then you have complete and utter choice when it comes to you whether you choose it or not. Same with your clients, right? I was just saying to my amazing soul client before, I said, what if you could just be the space and when people came to you, you had complete response, your own responsibility and your own choice when to look at your messages, when to take the clients, when you work, how much money you're willing to receive, all of these things, we actually do have the capacity to choose it, but somewhere, something, somehow, someone took that away from you and made you feel like you didn't have the choice you do you do have the choice so what does receiving mean to you so comment below that's what i've actually there's no space on here but i have actually created this so you have space on the next page so so we've got a lot of space on here so i want you guys to comment below if you're here What does receiving really mean to you? And the reason why I ask you this is because sometimes we feel like when we receive something, there's an expectation there. You know, you think about it when, you know, there's a guy in a bar and he goes, can I buy you a drink? You're like, hmm, does he want something from me? The chances are very high that he does. <laughs> um, and it's the same thing with friends and family. And someone goes, oh, I would love to help you out or... You know, here's a present or whatever it is. You think, hmm, now I've got to repay the favor. Can I? Do I have the space, time, and energy to fulfill this contract, which you've just kind of created there yourself? So instead, 
What if we just said, oh, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate that coffee. Thank you. And what if that was the only gift that you had to be in that receiving? So, so many of us have an attachment to what receiving truly means, which stops us from receiving it. So let's just destroy and uncreate and move that block, throw that block away, <laughs> because it's not necessary. And like I said yesterday, you know, is it a procedure that you require or a perspective? Is that not just an interesting point of view that when you receive, you have to give back? Now, of course, there's an energetic balance when it comes to this. So, of course, you know, you're not going to be an arsehole and take, 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 because the energetics will be out of there. But you are constantly able to take responsibility and ask the question, am I willing to receive this? Do I desire to receive this? Is there any motives, agendas, um, expectations behind this offer? Or is this person just generally wanting to buy me a coffee? Sometimes we overthink things and then we end up screwing ourselves. So Emma said, before release your block, before the release your blocks course, which is my program that she's finishing off now, it's so cool. I definitely felt that way about, about receiving and receiving. So did you feel like there was an expectation there, Emma? Andrea said, yes, I feel that in receiving that there is some contract and interesting or oh, contact feeling or contract. I was just about to say contract as well. So I'm going to do a clearing in a minute for you guys. Thinking that if someone gave me something, I had to give back. Exactly. Rather than just receiving. And Emma actually, um, because I've had my birthday during um, this, this last Release Your Blocks program, um, she turned up and gave me this beautiful present. And I just received it with gratitude and joy. And I was like, thank you. And I just like flew a whole lot of gratitude to her. It doesn't make me feel like I have to go and buy her a present and give her that. Because that there is like old way of thinking. Like it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's not even like, it's not relevant anymore. So what are you willing to receive? Sometimes when you feel like there's an agenda or a motive or an expectation there, it's because you're feeling that from the other person. So you just have to ask a question, am I willing to receive this? Are you willing to re receive that 7K that you were desiring a week or a month? Are you willing to do that with no expectations, just with gratitude? And anything that doesn't allow you to do that or be that or know that or perceive that, will you please destroy and uncreate that now? Let's give that back. So Kara said, I'm allowing myself to receive more. What would it take? That is amazing, Kara. And Emma said, yes, expectation. I was taught that. You're taught to give more than you receive because that's polite. And that is a rule that was made. Um, and so I want you guys to yeah, really dive deep on that. What does receiving actually mean to you? You know, turn the piece of paper around, scribble it out, do whatever you like. Do you have any underlying fear around receiving? Receiving is one of my pillars for a reason. It is one of my pillars because if you can't receive, if you can't release, if you can't perceive, and if you cannot receive, I don't know if I just said that twice or whatever, then how can you receive joy and happiness and orgasms and money and love? How can you receive these things? If you're not willing to receive how many contracts do we have and oaths and vows and fealties and communities with people in this life or past lives if you believe in that about what it is you have to give them including our children you know and I go into this quite deep quite often and you can actually check it out on my podcast relation blocks on Spotify it's um, giving yourself away giving or gifting yourself away I think it is it's on the podcast anyway and I talk about children a perfect example, my son, um, I just put a post on my private page today, my personal page, because I didn't know how to look after him because I wasn't willing to receive the love that he was giving me. I loved him and I cuddled with him and stuff, but I wasn't willing to receive what he was willing to gift me, even as a baby. So if we are functioning this way with society, with the giving and the gifting, and with not allowing ourselves to receive love and joy and money and orgasms and all those different things if we're not willing to receive that then where are we cutting off our receiving from our children or from the animals or from the earth and instead we lock things in our shadow self we're trying to fight so much against ourselves that we're, we're locking ourselves off we're blocking ourselves off and we're not receiving what our divine 
purpose is, but also our divine right, our birthright to actually receive money and to receive the love and the joy and the freedom and the space and the time that we actually deserve. And all of that is linked into your business. The hustle will only get you so far. It may get you to the first 10K. It's not that hard to make the 10K if you put your mind to it, but to maintain um, to maintain basically monetizing your genius, which means being all of you, you have to be really honest with yourself, take full responsibility. Some of you will hear this and some of you may not hear this. Some of you, it may be like just kind of like, what is she talking about? So let me know if this is making sense and I can explain it. A lot of people have already done work with me so they understand the way that I talk, which is maybe a little bit different. Um, so if you do have any underlying fear around that, you know, you may want to actually write what that is and change the story, okay? Are you willing to release that now? So that's what I all just kind of did in this book here. So guys, basically, wow, I've been talking for like 35 minutes. How does that even happen? So basically, what is your story? What has happened to you? Now, I, there's another amazing podcast um, that was released yesterday where Donna Lessa, who was my coach for six months, we got really deep and raw into, you know, some of her story and also some of my story. And what I really loved about that, and I actually thanked her for that, was she was so raw and real about her story and about sharing it there was no room for her to feel like care if there was any judgment coming her way and same with me as well i don't have the room or the capacity or i'm not available for it i'm just available to help people in the best way i can so by embracing my shadow self like i can tell you right now i used to drink a lot of alcohol like in my 20s i could drink two bottles of wine by myself literally by myself <laughs> and um you know if people said you've got an alcohol problem i'd be like what are you talking about i was so unconscious to it i was so miserable in different areas of my life that i was trying to fill something up so when i tell you you know i was just functioning from a b or c or d you know i won't go into my stories um but when i talk about that or when people talk about things that they've done that they're not proud of then you know it's when we can turn everything around and see the golden nuggets in that story and how we can help thousands of people with that story it changes it a little bit we have to first deal with it ourselves and look at it how many of you can look in the mirror smile and go Fuck, i love you you are phenomenal today you did enough i'm really impressed with how much you did, whether you lay around relaxing, <laughs> whether you canceled your PT, or whether you literally made, you know, like a million dollars. How many of you, no matter what you did, could look at you and go, I love you today, you did enough. I love you because I do. Money comes to you so easily because you're showing up every day as you, unapologetically, and you don't give a flying fuck what anyone thinks because you know your truth. How many of us can look in the mirror and say that? How many of us know that we are not just a body, we're a being with a purpose? How many of us know, you know, and you may go, yeah, 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 I know all that, I know all of that, I know all of that, but are you owning that? And I know personally when I start working with people and I go, look, I want you to, if it was a one-to-one, -one, I might be like, I want you to look at yourself and say, I love you, for instance. A lot of people it might take six weeks to get to that point because you've been taught not to but what if you could look at yourself despite the shit that you've done everyone's got regrets right and you could say I love you I learned so much I'm so grateful for you now how can we do more how can we contribute to the world with this knowledge that we have now some of you may or may not know but i left my husband who i'm with now um, and we were just about to get married we had everything prepared this is in our early 20s we've now been married for like um i don't know like nine years next month i think um again but we broke up for two years and the amount of judgment i received for that for being this for being this for being this for being this, for being this you know just throw all of the things out there 
including with myself, I couldn't look at the things that I did for a very long time. And I could feel the judgments of others, but now it's my strongest story. And I say to my husband nearly every day, I'm so grateful we broke up because now this is our reality and it's so much better than it would have been. So where is and what is your story and where can that help other people? Now, when it comes to your business, I'm just gonna check, okay. See if there's any more um, comments. When it comes to your story, what I actually recommend doing for your business is actually writing. Um, you might want more paper than this. I actually outsourced and I got one of my friends. I did a swap with her, I think. And I got her to type my story out as I talked. There's also um, Otter, O T T A or, or E R, sorry, O T T E R. Um, which is a free app where you can talk into your phone. You can also transcribe it um, depending on what phone you've got. I've got one that transcribes it. If you can't be bothered writing it out, <laughs> just making sure there's no excuses here. But if you could write out your story or if you have a journal and you can have three main stories if you're going to monetize your genius and create yourself into a brand, then what will actually happen is you will always go back to those stories. Now, my three stories was obviously my son and my child and having, you know, my children being postnatal depression and wanting to die only like, what, like probably five years or so ago. And, and then the other one at the same time that was happening was a girl called Emma came along and she was spirit and she wanted me to talk to her mum. She wanted me to talk to her best friend in Australia who I connected with and went over there and taught her access consciousness and now she's doing the same all around Australia like how does it get any better than that and then what was my other one I had another one as well um oh about money about how I had absolutely none and I changed my point of view around and then money just started flying in at me so I've got like three stories right that I usually bring up uh, or I can refer to and they are my stories I know that my spirit story helps all of the, the people that I'm teaching about spirit because I learned how to talk to them I am a, I'm a medium like I learned how to perceive them I learned how to release the crap so then I could receive from them so whether you're a personal trainer a coach or whether you are an up-and-coming aspiring um, you know literally a medium or whatever it is or a reader it doesn't matter it's all about knowing where you came from and how you got there so then you can lead other people as well your story is a thing that is so potent that can help so many people so what else did I write down there so the pain and pleasure okay so the pain of not looking at your shadow self. Now, I just want to say, like, I understand if you don't want to look back. I understand if there's things that are too fresh that you don't want to look at, and that's okay. This is all about timing on your on your half. This is all about taking that responsibility, like I said, and being willing to receive everything and then choosing those gold nuggets out of that. The difference between the coach who use, uses their stories to get um, sympathy or you know please buy my product because I'm broke that type of energy um, is completely different to the coach who says hey look I went through this this and this and this I understand that you're having a hard time because I was there it's really about resonating with that client right so even if you haven't started a business yet this is a really powerful tool to do because you look back at yourself and go what are the things I'm not willing to look at right now what are the things that I'm willing to see? And what you'll find as well is as you become more conscious in these areas, memories pop up. Do you ever have that? Do you ever have memories just pop up randomly? Like I'll have a memory of a guy that I dated or something and pop up and I'll be like, oh God, I don't want to look at that. And I'm like, okay, what do I need to look at here? Or a friend that I had a conversation with, or I'll just have memories of situations that pop up. I'm like, why are these popping up? And then I acknowledge them. So what I do is I go, thank you for the memory what is the purpose of having this is there anything i need to look at do i need to change my perspective on the situation so i kind of like scan the situation and look at it from an observer point of view like i'm on the ceiling kind of watching it from both um being real diplomatic with both kind of um areas um or i go is it time to let this go and sometimes i just get a real strong yes it's time to let it go 
So I don't let the story define me. If you're brought up broke, it doesn't mean you've got to stay broke. If you're brought up rich, it doesn't mean that you have to sabotage that because you wanted to fit in. These are just mistaken beliefs. And when we can actually think about this and go, right, so this story was a part of my life. It doesn't define me, but it's given me the strength so I can go work with these people who had depression or they might have had a mental illness or they may have um, been in a narcissistic relationship or they may have had an eating disorder, the health, the wealth, um, you know, all of that in relationships. There are three things that everybody has similar things on health, wealth and relationships. They are three pillars of life, really. So how can you be the guide for those things? What do you know? Because I'm telling you now, there's things that you know that other people don't. And these things that you could repeat that I'm saying right now to other people and they would hear it from you and not me. So it doesn't matter if we're doing, if we're becoming the coach or if we're the PT or if we're the, the health, um, holistic health practitioner, whatever you're doing, your unique voice and which women are going to during the, um, during the day is about your unique voice, but your unique voice is yours and everyone will hear you differently. The vibration is different. The frequency is different. And this is because if you can get this, this version of you here and this version of you here and you can bring it together, you have the whole version of you. Any decent coach will sit there and they can be really honest about what they're going through. They don't hide. So going back to the beginning, if you're just jumping on, let me know if you're here, please. Um, but if you, the very beginning of this call, I said, you know, are you hiding? Where are you hiding? You're hiding behind a rock? Are you hiding behind this mask? Where are you hiding? Where are you not showing up? You know, what is actually going on within you? Because a lot of people say, I don't know who I am. And it's because they're identifying themselves to their past. They're identifying themselves to the mother, the sister, the friend, the lover, the worker. I mean, how many people work at like a supermarket and then you've got, say, maybe high-end lawyers and they, because of their status, they actually have a point of view on where they belong in society. How many people are stay-at-home mums or entrepreneurs and they think because of what their status is, they have to fit into a particular mould? It's just not real because we're all the same. We all have these hands, we all have this mind, we all have a voice, we all have a message, we all have a divine purpose. And it's just you figuring out what aligns and feels good for you rather than trying to fit into other people's molds where you're feeling wonky and you don't know why. So let me know if this is making sense for you guys. I can still see there's a few eyes. I haven't lost you all, so that's always good. <laughs> and if you're on replay as well, I do want to hear from you, okay? So what are these stories? The potency of storytelling. Now, a friend once said to me, people love your stories, tell your story. And I wasn't willing to. I just wanted to help people. My story didn't matter. I'm, I'm not significant. I'm just me. I was just a mum. I was just a hairdresser. I was just a, a wife, a, the eldest of five. I was just me. I'm just Victoria, you know. Everyone feels that way. <laughs> just saying, everybody feels that way. Paris Hilton feels that way. Kim Kardashian, Pink. They are all people having the same experiences as you. Some people might have more money than you. whoop de do. So you're a bit more focused on when to pay the bills and stuff, but they've got other stuff, right? Money sometimes is, like having lack of money is that excuse for not showing up because you concentrate so much on that. What if you're concentrating on how you can make a difference in the world, no matter how that looks, without making that solid? And then again, the money rolls in. This is monetizing your genius, guys. I never said this was like an exact step by step on how to do that because I can tell you that. I do tell people that. I do in my programs. But I also invite them to go through this stuff first because I could never just do a Facebook Live like this and show up. No way. I would do it and then delete it. And then again and delete it. And then again and delete it. I remember being at the beach and going, okay, this, this burning desire to show up and... It's so big right now, and this was probably about three years ago or four years ago, I can't remember. Anyway, I just started feeling a lot better within myself. I wasn't um, so depressed anymore. My kid was sleeping. And um, I went down the beach, 
and I did like I should probably find one I did like about 10 or 20 videos hey guys I'm Victoria Rara. I didn't know to wear headphones um, I didn't know to put the screen like this or anything like that these are all things that you learn right like these are the easy things like going to school but it was that showing up and I watched them later and I deleted it and I deleted it and I deleted it and I was like how do people do this you know you see the Amanda Francis and you see all these people and they just naturally hold up and go hey guys I'm just walking into the beauty salon da, da, da. and you're like how do they do that so perfect also how do teenagers do selfies so perfect practice that is the easy stuff it's the showing up and be willing to be seen that's where the potency is it's the story and I will have clients that say to me Victoria I had to do five takes of that video to show up and I go do you want to know how many I did for my program I go for nearly every release your blocks um, module that I did because I wanted it to be a, a particular message I would delete 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 I could do like 10 per time sometimes I've been known to do 20 videos and delete them and just keep going and keep going and keep going practice makes perfect so if you feel like you're not a natural then start practicing you know so that's just one of the things it's just kind of like a, a little bit of a structure thing there as well but when it comes down to your story this is where your story may be don't give up or it might be show up or it might be like receive help whatever your story is if you can express it and do an action towards that every day and you're willing to receive the fruits of your labor with that then you just watch it roll in like I said yesterday I had clients that invest in me as their coach and excuse me and they get checks in the mail then they get given cars and then they're seeing spirit and all these different things are happening because they're choosing it and they're allowing it to happen so one of the little um, I'll kind of leave on this because it feels like five minutes but it's been 50 but one of the things that I do when it comes to this is I look at my shadow and I go I love all of me I'm not defined by my past what do I require to look at I'm willing to receive any of the awarenesses that I'm choosing to look at I'm willing to receive I'm willing to receive I'm willing to receive anything that doesn't allow me to receive I just shift that out of the way I'm willing to receive and becoming more present with this and doing this shadow superpower work while you're in the shower where you can feel the water coming down where you can smell the soap where you're washing your hair while you're having a mermaid bath I had like two yesterday with essential oils like while you're doing that you go what is my superpower what is my superpower what am I good at so I can tell you guys now mine is talking I can just riff for hours because I love telling about my knowledge I love it I don't hold anything back right what is yours I've got clients that don't like to speak so much but when you're in their presence you feel like they're just like you're like oh this is so nice because they're actually activating you what is your superpower what are your strengths are you the nurturer are you the speaker are you the person that looks at somebody and they receive a healing from you are you the person who's really good at seeing what someone can do with their body or with their mind or with their soul can you read them like a book what is your potency if you're a mum you, you would know this because you can read your children really really well if you're a coach you'd know this because you can see that with people if you're a friend if you're a, if you're a lover you know these things because you're living them daily what is the thing that you're so damn good at that you think you can never get paid for it here's a real kicker you can get paid for it I decided I wanted to be paid to speak I get paid to speak it's really good I had two invitations this week from like um, business owners and coaches to say hey Vic I would love you to be a contribution on my free da 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 or on my group could you please do your intuition intuitive work and I'm like sure they don't even know what they want me to do they just know that they want me to do it because they are following the energy now if you are willing to receive then invitations can come to you as well if you're willing to be the difference in the world with your uniqueness that nobody else has it means embracing all of you which is your shadow and your superpower so what is your superpower I love it Emma said I'm willing to receive awareness with ease joy and glory yes and you know if, if you do want a little bit of help with that um, 
what Emma just said was the access consciousness um, mantra. All life comes to me with ease, joy, and glory. If you try saying that 10 times in the morning and 10 times at night, then it, it's like it shifts something. It's like it shifts the energy and life becomes easier because life being hard is just because you think it has to be hard. But what if it actually could be easy? What if the only difference between you charging $30 an hour <clears throat> instead of $3,000 an hour was a point of view? And then if you shifted a few things, then it could land. Now, this is pretty um, pretty high-end stuff, guys. So let me know what your thoughts are on this. Let me know if you've had any awarenesses. Um, go do the book, I think. Oh, yeah, cool. I was like, I think I covered that. So basically, we had those, those questions um, about, and always saying truth before, like truth. Are you willing to receive? You will know because you'll get a gut feeling of, no, I'm actually not. Oh, shoot. Something needs to move. Something needs to shift. Something needs to happen. What can that be? By asking these questions and getting really true with yourself, you guys will start receiving stuff. And some of the stuff that comes your way may be kind of like crunchy and uncomfortable, but it's just coming up so you can step through it, lean into it and go, oh, okay, I'm receiving change. I'm receiving glory and joy and money. So what would it take for me to get out of my own way and start receiving all that money, start receiving those 10K months, start showing up with my superpower and get paid for being me? What would that take? Now, if you, it's the first time you've heard of that, it might sound a little bit um, different, but um, it's possible. It's all very possible, and I'm living proof because that is exactly what I've implemented in my life. Um, but I'm not, I'm not afraid of dropping things as well, and I don't feel like a failure because I had to quit, or like had cancel my PT for the for the next two days. I know what my body requires. I know what I require. And I take full responsibility for that. So I'd love to hear from you guys. Let me know how you go with um, what you come up with and what your awarenesses are. And tomorrow I will be on at 1 p.m. for the live. And I am so excited. And tomorrow we're going to be talking about, oh, energetic alignment. Oh my God, so much goodness here. Okay, my loves, I will let you go. Thank you so much uh, for being here. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.